here it is, devlog number two. Oh my goodness, we've come so far. Uh, so this one's going to be boring again because I'm starting off with an amazing flowchart. Yay! Um, this is the entire game flow of how the game is uh, planned to work. Um, some, most of this is actually already coded as far as the basics, foundations. Um, nothing is actually 100% complete yet, but I mean that's the whole point of coding, right? So I'm going to talk through this real quick. New user acquires the game somehow, magically, and then, as soon as they start it up, they'll see, well, the game will check the server to make sure, you know, the server is still awake and there and exists. Then it'll show the bulletins. Yay, bulletins and news. Cool. Then... User skips those completely, reads the privacy policy in terms and conditions, as every user should, and then clicks on the register. Yay, they make a new account. Awesome. The account is made, and then they log in. Yay! And then it goes down to the town center. This is the main hub of the game, and it's where the story starts off. Uh, you may have seen... A couple clips of the goddess of dragons lady slide in and tease the player a little bit which you'll see more of when you actually play the game please play the game it's fun it's a lot of work so after town center she says hey scrub welcome to the world let's get you your first waifu and she sends you over to this what I'm calling the castle, but it's going to be, or it is, the uh, gotcha. This is the area, the screen you go to to access all the banners. Uh, the reason why I have these named like town center and castle and whatnot, so I'm planning on putting in a kind of a city, not city manage, not a full-fledged city management, but basically you build buildings and you place them onto the map. And when you go back to the town center, it, it will uh, dynamically build the background image based on where you place the buildings. So starting off, you only have a pile of trash in this big field. And uh, the goddess of dragons has you get your first waifu, which is Trash Chan from the uh, pile of trash. And then she sends you on your merry way. So you go back to the town center, oh boy, she hops in again and is like, wait, I need to teach you how to actually fight. So, at this point, uh, in the game itself, there's some icons on the bottom, you can access everything. Uh, I'm going to lock that all behind the uh, buildings, and so make this, at least the first part of the game and tutorial kind of lead you through all the screens and make it a better experience. That said, uh, she will jump straight to, let's see, what was it? Quest board. Uh, the quest board will already have uh, your first team configured, which just has Trash Chan in it. And then uh, the first actual hunting quest which is your uh, training quest and introduces you to the hunting quest uh, style of format. It's very quick. It takes one click of a button. You win. And she sends you straight back to... Let's see. Oh yeah, the town center. You're thrown back to the town center and then you can go back to the gotcha to get your ten rolls. Uh, the repeatable 10 rolls, you get a U an ultra rare every time. And you can uh, redo these rolls as many times as you like until you get uh, the character you want. Well, the 10 characters you want. So at that point, once you get that, you have uh, a total of 11 characters. You have Trash Chan and then 10, quote, real characters. And... Uh, uh, jumping back to the town builder, um, you need the uh, training yard, 
uh, in order to configure all your teams uh, you, and you set your formations and after I talk through all this I'm going to demo that how I've redone that a little bit because I think it's a lot cooler and it shows better more of the mechanics with the the team formations okay so uh, uh, you get your formation and at this point you have your uh, quest board the castle the training yard unlocked so you have three buildings that the player has placed and dynamically show in the background and it's gonna look super cool I hope it looks super cool depends on uh, my code if it's good enough to show it being super cool so uh, player is basically rank zero at this point and at the quest board uh, there's it's automatically refreshed and it's only showing hunting quests at this point and they reward money which yeah it's fine you're at the beginning of the game you need money because you know you're poor so uh, each quest each quest tier requires a certain number of uh, what are called key quests and they have a little ribbon shown beside them and once when you have enough for that tier it unlocks the urgent so there's like a little key here and uh the urgent always does story progression and uh, that's how you advance to the next tier to unlock harder quests and whatnot so at the very beginning of the game after the tutorial you're just doing one type of quest there only, there's only five of them they're easy to do you knock them out and at that point, uh, back at the town center, you're able to start building the barracks and the warehouse. So, so at this point, it's critical in the game where you need to be able to go into your character screen and change uh, any equipment that you may have found from the hunting quest. Because hunting quests can sometimes drop equipment too. And then, of course, um, you're getting stuff and you need somewhere to put the stuff and browse through the stuff so that's why you have a warehouse that's where behold all your stuff is and all of this accessible through the town center and again town builder fancy background good stuff uh, you do the urgent the next tier and at that point um, when you get to the official rank one license uh, you can do all these quests are going to start appearing and they appear randomly and each one is a mini game uh, hunting is pretty much the only non -min mini game because it you click a button and you watch your team fight and you get the money this is uh, basically an auto fight mode, which is found in uh, many gacha games. So uh, I'm doing it myself. And it's a good way to test your team and um, show how stronger they've become with better equipment and whatnot. And basically what you're doing is you're bouncing between doing the quests, doing all the quests, do the key quest to do the story the urgent story to get the the next uh the next rank ribbon rank next rank license which then allows you to build more in the town and so after rank one you can unlock the marketplace and this is where you buy stuff so you can actually go out and buy better equipment and directly equip your characters with better equipment then the school is a more advanced feature so each character has their own skill and with the school uh, if you have extra characters you can get rid of them and turn them in and in return you'll get a training book and this training book will randomly change a skill on uh, one of your characters so it's not critical at the beginning of the game but mid game or early mid game you do want to start working on your skills and getting those lined up and at this point 
uh, you can unlock the um, the specialty banners, which are like the daily and the event banners. Uh, the standard, I didn't mention when that unlocks. It unlocks after, earlier. Because the standard is where the player is going to get uh, the majority of their uh, new waifu characters. <clears throat> it's so weird talking about this. <laughs> Alright, so at the town center again, uh, school oh, I went backward. Okay. So when the character when the player has gone uh, far enough, they will unlock the guild and the arena. So as it says, as it you can imply the arena is PvP. And these are just like 3v3. You pick three characters and then you pick a team to fight. And um, depending on if you win or lose, you gain or lose points. And this directly accesses a point system leaderboard. And there are rewards given to the top players. PvP is always a good mechanic. Kind of required. And then, of course, the uh, ambassador. Uh, this is all the guild functions. So if you're a guild leader, then you have access to administration. If you're a player, you can choose to like leave the guild. And then the guild has access to the, its own functions, uh, such as a specific, their own guild boss, which if they're able to beat it, they get, all the players get rewards. A guild league, which is guild versus guild, uh, this is something I need to think out more of how exactly it's going to work. And then uh, contribute. Uh, players can donate their extra material, extra materials to the guild, and the guild will, um, uh, with enough materials, can like level up and become a stronger guild and allow more members and, and uh, whatnot. Let's see, so, what's next? Um, after the guild, the barber, uh, once that is built and unlocked, it allows character customization. So all the characters went, uh, received from the banner, ex except for the event banner, have a randomized appearance, appearance. And with the barber, what they can do is, starting off, they can uh, change the character's hairstyle. And then after that, they can change the hair color. I'm not sure how far I want to take customization because, I mean, technically you can change like the hair, the hair color, the eye color, the mouth type, the ear type, and the skin uh, color. And uh, I mean, you can essentially create your own uh, waifu at that point, however you want, however you want it to look anyway. So, uh, after that is a stadium. Did I not put the stadium on here? Dude, I spent so much time building this and I didn't even put the stadium. So there's a stadium. Stadium. And what that allows is uh, special events, such as the world boss, which I'm going to demo or talk about next. And uh, that is... Uh, uh, like purely leaderboard based so um, at the end of whatever event is running in the stadium then uh, the top players receive re rewards and then everyone gets like a participation trophy and finally uh, after that we're solidly in the end game we're at like the second to last license rank and all that's left is the warband this is a end game co-op slash pvp uh game mode that's um you set up three teams and using your three teams um during a, a 28 day long event you can move your teams um starting from the outside of a grid uh, the goal is to make it to the very center and at the center is a final boss and everyone works together um or against each other uh, to take down the final boss when the final boss is taken down everyone who participates all players get a uh, get a reward uh, during the course of uh, the 28 days um, 
the uh, players can uh, claim a node, they can move to a different node, and then um, they can, if, if they're on a node that's already claimed, they can challenge the player that already has it, and if they win, then they claim the node. Um, so a sub game in this uh, game mode is um, uh, points. So when you have a node claimed, you gain points over time. So the players with the highest points are going to get extra rewards at the end of the 28 days. And that is the entire game. So on to the next thing. So now this leads into, you know what, let's talk about the guild boss. So I have the uh, foundation code for the guild boss, um, not accessible through here, this is just dev mode. Um, but the mechanic is, so there's a guild boss, um, I have some, I'm working on this graphic for this guy. So basically you se select your specific team to fight the world boss, and then as you go through it, uh, well, you get the, uh, your point is determined on how much, uh, total damage you do. And as you see, he has a life bar, and as it hits zero, the difficulty increases. And, which means he does more damage, has more life, so on and so forth. The, uh, the big thing here is a lot of backend code, because this guy... Um, uses a different, uses his own, um, how do you say it, like pose frame. So when I built this game initially, all of these characters use the same exact frame. And that's why, well, they're all female. Because um, I was using my kid's uh, Barbie doll as an example, uh, just to test a theory of the sprite rotation and um, movement, and that's, uh, I've been using that same frame this entire time, and, well, up until now, and so I was thinking, you know what, I want a guild boss, or a world boss, <clears throat> something that the players can throw their characters at, and see how much damage they can do, and then with that total damage, it gets submitted to a high score table, and then that's, uh, it's mainly for bragging rights, but I can easily tie in this with the whole event system, like, oh, there's a world boss every week, and at the end of the week, uh, give the top 10 players or whatever, uh, some good rewards. You know what? My team is actually doing good for once. Like, this is the highest score I've gotten so far. And I've kind of ran out of things to talk about with this guy, because, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the pose for this guy, he uses the same amount of sprites, uh, parts for everyone else. Um, I haven't drawn his legs yet. Um, his head is done. It's in the style I want. It's in the Japanese ukiyo-e style. And then, uh, using some loose interpretation, I drew everything else, but I still need to go through and do the shading and some better coloring. And then, of course, you know, draw his, his legs. And then, uh, once I had enough parts drawn, I was like, you know what, I want to actually test this theory. And so I went in and I, um, you know what, I think I can say uh, I rigged him up. I rigged up the model to a frame and with that frame in the pose editor uh, I whipped up some poses really fast and this guy's uh, his own monster um, you know I'll show that once my team gets wiped out and my score is going so high this is cool <laughs> so so yeah all I do with the animation, I set the keyframes, and then the math does the work, and it animates, and it's kind of cool. All right, you know what? Why is my team so good? See, so yeah, with this character, I finally got another support character that does triage, and then that combined with revive. So whenever someone gets knocked down or fainted, 
uh, this character revives, and then this character does triage, which does an immediate heal. And then this character, I got a new tank. Yeah, note the bug that her hair is still back. Um, so she taunts. So she's constantly taunting this boss. And whenever she gets fainted, then uh, this character will revive. This character will heal. And then my other two characters are doing damage. Uh, this character, using an evasive skill, uh, that increases her own defense. Uh, I need to roll it into something else. And this character, I forget what she's doing. I think it's just like Mark or something. Yeah, it's just Mark. Oh, my team's getting wiped out. Nice. This is a good score. I'm happy about this. I'm getting better at my own game. Alright, so he defeated everyone. He does the uh, polite bow. Here's the bell end with my score, <laughs> 0. Okay, I need to change the number for a minute. All right. This score now gets submitted to the server and leaderboard. So I'm going to have a screen similar to this. You're going to have the team at the bottom, and it's going to show the boss, and it's going to show a leaderboard. So let's finish talking about this guy. Um, I did some new navigation here for... Much better navigation. So yeah, as you can see, I drew the guy. This is the default pose. Everything is rotation zero. And everything is connected with the pivot point. So the thing is, I didn't put any rotation limits on this guy. Where's his head? Uh, so his head can do some crazy stuff like this. And uh, it makes it a bit awkward to animate when... There's no rotation limits, because the rotation limits, as you move stuff around, it'll force everything to kind of stay together. So, let's do the uh, the attack. Uh, let's load up this frame. So, I manually posed him into this. I have this keyframe to this keyframe uh, to this keyframe. And also note that this key, his sword is so long, it's clipping. I need to... I'll figure that out. And so, yeah. With the three keyframes, here's his attack. And it works. And it's kind of cool, I think. Alright. We are done talking about World Boss. Let's talk about teams. Uh, or squads. So, I, I redid the squads. <clears throat> this interface is different. You can't click and change people directly on this now and there's a reason for that so i have some teams set up uh, and then we have the warbands and pvp and then uh, what i've done is i've added more teams which you can't see and won't be able to configure except on the screen itself and these are event specific teams so like say on the world boss it's going to have a team that you can configure directly for that boss. And that way you can change around people as you want. And it's not going to mess anything else up. It's specific just for that event. So I want to edit this formation. And instead of having the five slots now, there's a total of nine slots. But the teams are limited by their type. So I still want it as five characters, but you can change the characters into different positions. So instead of having just one offense character, you can ha now have two offense characters. And if I go here and try to select one, only five total for the squad. That's cool. But of course you can do, you can just move people around as normal. And then the important thing is, let me, your name is Yami, I'm gonna move her here. So a leader must be set. There must be a leader for every team, which is the center slot. And this character is important because they provide the nature color bonus for the entire team. So this character is a green skill, and so everyone with green, which is just my support character, is going to get an extra bonus. And this character being a support character in a support slot already gets a bonus, so you get a, a bigger bonus. Yeah, this is fun to balance. <laughs> All right. And of course you can do the, the reset. Yeah, I want to reset. And then you can save and return, but I don't want to save and return. I want to discard my changes. Still there. So let's jump over to um, 
So let's make a new team. I'm gonna pick, uh, let's pick you. And then I have added two side slots, which I'm calling Lancer. So what these do, these provide a bonus to red and purple skills. So, do have red skill. Um, well, you're a red skill. And then, um, you know what, we'll keep the leader. We'll make the leader, uh, not you. Man, I don't have some good skills. Okay. And so, uh, the Lancers, they aren't frontline. I mean, they, they still do the same amount of damage and whatnot. So, this, the positioning only affects skills. So, this Intimidate is getting the skill bonus. And then, this Sacrifice is getting the skill bonus. And then, of course, the leader is a uh, purple skill. So, getting an extra bonus. So, both of these skills are getting enhanced. Which is awesome. And then uh, the support is all green. The advisor is blue or yellow. And then the guard is purple and the offense is red. So these are still mostly the same. So if we have our advisor as a, let's use you, evasive, eh, that's all right. So save and exit. And then Here's my team. The leader is always going to be in the middle, and then it's going to fill out the characters on the side. Unless, this is um demo. Let's call this video. Updated the squad name, which saves immediately now. So you can go through and rename everybody directly. And awesome. So let's go to the warbands. Warbands are a end game setup, which means when you go into here, you'll see that I have all nine slots filled with characters. Yes, the entire grid can be filled with characters. And the characters are unique per team. So, excuse the lag, because since doing this, I have to figure out uh, <laughs> better ways to optimize. So if I try to grab someone that's already on that warband, which is this icon, which I need to draw a graphic for, which means that they're in an icon, or they're in a warband. And then this other icon means they're in a PvP team. So, okay, so if I'm trying to grab this character, this character is already assigned to Team 11. Move here? Yeah, I want to move here. Cool, so we got someone moved. I'm going to save and return. So now when I jump to this team... This warband, look, it's, dang, it didn't save. It didn't update. Why didn't you update? Man, I just found a bug during a dev video. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> How it's supposed to work. All right, this person was supposed to move from this team. And uh, she is still right here. So pretend... Pretend that she moved, and then your warband is going to look like this. Okay. <laughs> Alright, and then the last thing is the PvP teams. So you notice there's three characters, and PvP, as I mentioned earlier, they're limited to three characters. So this is where you really want to have a good setup with your skills and a good balance to play off each other. See, I was thinking um, a 5v5, it's good for it's good for PvE content, but for PvP, um, by limiting it to three characters, it's more of a more of a challenge because you're limited to three skills, of which um, ooh, why won't you let me do that? Alright, found another bug. Man, finding all these bugs. So you have a support role, and you have your leader role, which can still be, ah, this is killing me, which can still give your leader bonus, so triage and revive, and then you have an offense role, um, yeah, so, man, okay, that's super annoying. Ta-da, there we go. So this person is going to intimidate. Actually, you know what? It should be a tank. So if I was going to do this as an actual PvP team, this person could taunt the enemy to attack, and then if she gets knocked down, 
then could get revived and then immediately healed. And I think this this is a strong uh, setup in general. And I look forward to seeing all sorts of combinations in the future. So yeah, here's my PvP team. And then this will be for the PvP mode, which still needs to be developed. And I won't even bother talking about now because this video is long enough. We got we got the whole flow of gameplay. We have the world boss, and we have some teams redone. Oh, the last thing, jeez. <laughs> the other feature is, all right, on the quests, and whenever there's a place where you can select a team, um, you're going to be able to uh, get a hover effect. You're going to be able to edit the team directly, which is amazing and much needed. Best feature ever. So there. So I change my team, going to save and return. Boom, it updates. And now this team, I'm going to go make them do some farming. Ta-da! And so this team, as you see, they are uh, in their formation that they were set. Cool. And what I mean is, so I set them in this plus formation, right? And that's how they're going to display on the screen. So if we jump to this first team, if I move this character up here in kind of this weird squiggly, I'm going to save it. When I do a mission now, or quest, they're going to run in with that same formation. <laughs> Man, I got that same bug. Man, why is this video full of bugs? This is embarrassing. All right. Yep. And of course, I had to adjust the positions to fit the actual grid onto the screen. And here we go. That's it. This is the entire video. What do y'all think? If you uh, want to be involved in the development, if you want to follow along with development, I have a link to the Discord. I have uh, a download, which I'm still trying to figure out the best way to get this out to people because as an alpha build, it's still popping up with uh, warnings and virus scanners and whatnot. I'm looking into having a web version of this, but there's uh, no guarantee I can get that working. So that's it for devlog number two. A uh, long one this time, but there was a lot to talk about. Uh, I think there was more talking than there was actual work put into the game this time. So that's cool. All right. Thanks. Bye.